Welcome to the rebroadcast of the annual Leaders in Energy, Four Generations of Leaders in Clean Energy and Sustainable Solutions Awards. This edited version is brought to you by The Sustainable Scoop. Since 2014, Leaders in Energy, founded by local Arlingtonian Janine Fennell, have spotlighted individuals whose commitment to improving future sustainability is reflected in their everyday work. This year's awardees are indeed exceptional. But as executive director of the Sustainable Scoop, I wish to especially recognize the Gen Z awardee for 2020, Jerry Ochterman. First featured on the Sustainable Scoop in 2015, he began his work on single-use styrofoam in middle schools. The impact he had on Fairfax Public Schools continues to serve as an example of why the Sustainable Scoop's focus on youth voices is so important. His contribution and the contribution of last year awardees from the Global Collab shows just how important young leaders are. I want to thank friends at Leaders in Energy, both past, present, and future. Enjoy this program by taking notes, sharing your reactions, and connecting with the organizations and individuals you are introduced to. So well, <laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the seventh annual uh, Four Generations of Leaders in Clean Energy and Sustainable Solutions uh, Award Celebration. Uh, glad to have everyone here. The theme for this, for this uh, award will be Regenerating for a Positive Future. We have an exciting program uh, for you today, full of celebration, new connections, and much, much more to uh, bring in the big green shift. Before we get started, we want to do a special acknowledgement to uh, all of the indigenous communities in whatever city you're logging in from. Uh, these communities are protecting up to 80% of the biodiverse regions on earth. So we wanna make sure we, we, we support whatever cause that they're, that they're working on. We're gonna show a brief video about our major sponsor, EarthX. Thanks, that's fantastic. We're so uh, delighted um, that today we're joined by both uh, Tremel Crow, founder of EarthX, as well as Lynn McBee, uh, board chair for EarthX, just to talk a little bit about Lynn before uh, she's able to join us virtually on the stage here. Um, Lynn McBee is a proud Texan with a lifelong love of science and nature that began as a child collecting bugs, climbing trees and playing in surf uh, along the Texas beaches. She started as a scientist and today advises on partnership development and serves as a company manager and employee owner. So please join me in welcoming uh, Tremel Escrow and Lynn McBee. Thank you so much. And it's an honor to be here tonight. And I want to just take a minute to really acknowledge my friend Trammell Crow, the visionary and the leader behind EarthX. EarthX has celebrated its 10th anniversary recently, and we've had an enormous amount of engagement globally, internationally, and we're really proud to be part of tonight's celebration. To do Trammell's whole bio and resume would go very long, and so I just want everyone and to- can't be told and, here. And can't be told here. <laughs> so it's been an honor to work alongside Trammell for these last months as we pivot and go into EarthX TV. What? You're up. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Samuel Trammell EC. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for being, we're glad to be associated with all of you all. Uh, I have gone virtual, but one of the blessings, ironically, of COVID is you learn so much, and we've learned that EarthX TV website and social media is our future, and hope to be covering many more things with you all in the future. Well, tonight is all about honoring some amazing leaders from many different generations, so congratulations to all of y'all tonight. So to close, we want to thank Janine and her Leaders in Energy team for putting this event together. We hope you enjoy the show and you must tune into EarthX TV. Janine, we want to be with you.
Thank you so much and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn and Trammell. Thank you. So with that, I'll, I'll bring to the virtual stage our Executive Director for Leaders in Energy, uh, Janine Beno. Welcome. Well, Let's thank you, Samuel. It's great to be here. And uh, just uh, really enjoyed the remarks of uh, Lynn and uh, Trammell about all perspectives. Uh, welcome, because that really just, I think, epitomizes what we're doing here at Leaders in Energy as well, trying to really uh, grow that big tent of um, so many people that, that are needed. Um, so look, this is our seventh annual Four Gen Awards. Can you believe it? It's like, wow, time flies when you're having a good time. But um, it's kind of fun to just look at all these themes here that we've had over the years, uh, leading through adversity, the urgency of now, um, sparking the passion in others. That's what's been so fun is to have themes and this one is regenerating for a positive future. We just thought that this was a really good theme to have with just everything that was going on in our country this year and you know, re hearing about the wildfires and, and so many things, the health pandemic, we thought we really did need to regenerate for a positive future. So I don't want to be a downer here. I'm just going to, you know, we, we have a lot of challenges that we really do need to. Uh, I heard uh, someone mentioning um, just uh, a lot of people being unemployed or, you know, being very intelligent and not finding employment. And you can see just these high unemployment numbers here from the shadow government statistics. If you're not familiar with John Williams' site, I highly recommend it because, you know, we read one uh, unemployment statistic in a paper, but it's often much higher, according to him. Uh, and then just all these other things that we're dealing with too, you know, the globalization, increasing automation, of course, the pandemic, uh, the increasing uh, tipping points, you know, just this uh, year uh, article in science about how um, they think we may have reached nine out of uh, 15 tipping points. So, you know, just, just a lot of really important things that we need to be focused on and everything. So uh, that's why we think we need leaders in energy and we need others, you know, all of our partners here tonight. Uh, just really our vision is a clean, green transformation, big green shift connects um, a lot of the issues that uh, we are facing. Um, we, so we say for sustainable development, for planetary habitability, for economic stability and growth, a massive shift is needed in a way that we think, work, and live. And that's what we refer to as a big green shift. And then um, our honoree uh, tonight, um, Akancha Khatri, um, who will actually be speaking to us by video because she's in Geneva, Switzerland with the time difference. So I couldn't uh, do it on Zoom, but she just wrote this really, um, she's the lead author of a groundbreaking report on the future of nature and business, really calling for a radical transformation of how the economy and business can still do very well without destroying our planet and nature. So we're really looking to the bridge um, for our sustainable future. We can do big things, guys. I mean, look, uh, Apollo uh, launched to the, the moon, you know, the moonshot in the late 60s. And, and then prior to that, we had the Civilian Conservation Corps that employed millions of people during uh, the Great uh, Depression. And I feel we need uh, something along those lines as well. And um, I'm heartened to see the Earthshot Prize. That's a similar big endeavor uh, that has been launched to do great things here on, on Earth. So I just wanted to let you know a little bit more about that. So who are we? Who are leaders in energy? And what are we trying to do? Um, we're a, a group of uh, you know, professionals in the clean energy sustainability industry um, or others that want to get into the clean energy industry or maybe just um, individuals that want to get more involved um, by making a conscious shift in their lives and communities. And why are we doing this? Um, Malcolm Gladwell in his book, The Tipping Point, talks about a tipping point as that magic moment when an idea, a trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. Tipping point. We at Leaders in Energy are working to accelerate a tipping point for the big green shift. We think that all hands on deck are needed and that everyone in every generation is needed to make this happen. We invite you to join us. Thank you. But this is our first year to do the Big Green Shift sponsor and um, just um, so delighted to have EarthX joining us and um, actually have a buddy here from Association of Energy Engineers from Dallas, Texas. So um, I was able to bring him in and let, let him know about our um, you know, just collaboration with EarthX. So really nice to be expanding our boundaries beyond the Washington DC area as well. 
So anyhow, thanks to Longenecker and Associates who's been supporting us for seven years from the very beginning. Uh, they're a support services contractor, actually out in Nevada, but they're doing a lot of work for Department of Energy. Uh, and then Catoctin Creek, of course. And then um, you'll hear a little bit more about our environmental leader, Gamblin, a very interesting story on that. Just a big um, thank you to all of our benefactors. You can see this list. Um, I don't know if Miriam Axel is on the line. Um, I know she was dialing in from Europe. Um, but I just really want to thank her. But um, thank you to all of our benefactors here. And um, you can see them on the screen and um, our media partners as well. So, so thank you. We really appreciate everything that you've done to make um, this event and a success and to support our mission. Um, so now we are at the part of the program that you all have been waiting for to introduce uh, the awardees. And so with that, We'll start off with the Gen X category of the awardees. Uh, and I'd like to welcome to the virtual stage, Annette Also, Executive Director of Resilient Virginia. Okay, good, uh, good evening, Samuel and company. I'm Annette Oso, and uh, I'm Director of Resilient Virginia. I appreciate uh, being part of this event. Uh, Janine Fennell and Leaders in Energy and our Resilient Virginia been longtime partners in doing joint events, so we're really pleased to uh, be able to be part of this. Our organization's goal is to uh, promote a resiliency planning around the state of Virginia. Uh, we work with local governments and community organizations uh, to educate them about the need for climate adaptation. All of this has become more relevant and uh, ha there has been great motivation this year with COVID-19 to know that uh, disasters of various kinds are, happen and climate change being one of them. So um, Tonya Graham leads the GEOS Institute and uh, one of their big programs is the Climate Wise program, which helps communities build resilience in the face of climate change. Uh, Tonya has um, been very involved with the American Society of Adaptation Professionals as a, a relatively new organization that is uh, recognized as uh, having as membership some of the more experienced, most experienced uh, uh, resiliency planning uh, consulting groups in the country. With that, I would uh, like to introduce Tonya Graham from GEOS Institute as the Gen X awardee. Uh, thank you, Annette. It has been fantastic working with Resilient Virginia these last several months as you've been uh, working with communities across your state. At the GEOS Institute, we help communities build climate resilience. Since 2008, we have worked with communities of different sizes and political persuasions across the U.S. And in the process, we've developed a climate planning, a climate planning framework we call Whole Community Resilience. And in this framework, we help local leaders take a holistic approach to building climate resilience that protects nature, health, culture, and the built environment while moving toward a green economy. I am so honored to receive the 4Gen Award. Climate adaptation and resilience work is all about protecting communities and nature from the impacts of climate change. In other words, preventing bad things from happening as climate changes but it's very hard to measure bad things that don't happen. Our work is also about helping local leaders approach climate resilience holistically, and that's almost impossible to measure. And so receiving an award that spans not only the climate field, but sustainability in general, is an indication of the impact of the work my team and I have been doing for the past 12 years, so thank you. Uh, I particularly appreciate representing Generation X because we often get lost between the boomers and the millennials. We are the latchkey generation or the MTV generation. Uh, according to Wikipedia, we are considered slackers, cynical, and disaffected. But in fact, I see us as taking a powerful role in changing the systems that we are increasingly leading and making a better world in the process. So I am proud to fly the Gen X flag today as I receive this award. So, uh, so much has changed since we started doing this work over a decade ago. I remember our staff processing the climate modeling data for our first project. It took three months and now we can do it in less than a week. 
But perhaps the greatest change we have seen is the inclusion of social equity as a primary goal of climate resilience. We've seen in our work that those who are already struggling are at a greater risk from climate change than those who are doing well. In every single project, we have seen this. And we know that many are struggling because of systemic racism. Several years ago, the adaptation field took a deep dive into social equity. And as a result, our whole community resilience framework sits on a foundation of two goals, ecological sustainability and social equity. I've been asked to share why I do the work I do. I was raised by parents who believed strongly in caring for land and people. But as a young adult, I saw that we were doing neither of these things very well and creating serious global problems because of it. I'm fortunate because my work allows me to influence how we care for both the land and people. Our whole community resilience framework creates solutions that work across the community, that engage residents, and make use of the best available science and local knowledge. Using this framework, we're able to help local leaders care for people and nature as they build climate resilience. It's why we created our Climate Wise program and why I love the work that I do. My goal for the future is that our Climate Ready Communities program expands quickly across the US. Every community needs to build climate resilience as part of our larger climate response, and many will not be able to afford a consultant. And as William Sloan Coffin suggests, be willing to risk something big for something good. Thank you so much for this Four Gen Award. I'm grateful and honored to receive it. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Can't wait to read the guide. And I love the quote, love the world as you work to protect it. Fantastic. So I'd like to uh, bring Janine back to introduce us to our millennial awardee. Janine. Um, so I am introducing our millennial awardee. And um, as I mentioned, each year we develop a special theme for our awards. And um, this year we came across this report that I mentioned earlier called the future of nature and business. And as a result of that um, report, um, it really inspired us for this regenerating for a positive future theme. And um, so I'm like, hey, can we, can we nominate a concha? And uh, lo and behold, um, we're able to get a hold of her and um, we are honoring her this year as, as this lead author in developing this report. Uh, Akanji Katri is the head of the Nature Action Agenda at the World Economic Forum. Uh, we'll hear from her virtually. Akanji, welcome. It's just a delight to have you here. We're so honored to have you as our millennial awardee. Could you tell our audience, uh, introduce yourself and just give a brief overview of your work related to the award? Sure. Thank you, Janine. Um, yes, my name is Akanksha Katri. I head the Nature Action Agenda at the World Economic Forum. Um, I have been working on this issue for uh, about three years now. Um, and the work that we I'm leading with my colleagues and my team uh, tries to create a business and economic case for safeguarding nature. Uh, the report that Janine was referring to, um, The Future of Nature and Business, which we released in July of this year, identifies that while fighting climate change is great and necessary, it's not enough. We also need to be able to safeguard our biodiversity as well as the rest of the planetary indicators. From uh, India, I've lived all my life in cities. Uh, I come from Delhi, um, and I have seen over the years of unfettered urbanization and just chasing economic growth has such a big impact on um, the environment and just the natural habitat around us, which means that in turn, it also affects um, the stress level. It also affects um, how people behave with each other and just the overall uh, social fiber um, in, a, in a society gets affected. So for me, when I work on topics like nature, uh, I work on it as um, a pathway towards not just conservation, uh, but a new way of thinking about the economy and growth uh, and almost like challenging our values that just bigger, better is always the right way to go. I would argue perhaps uh, staying sometimes smaller, more local uh, and closer to your people is better uh, for your emotional and physical health. Thank you so much. 
Concha. Really, we, again, are just um, delighted that we learned about the wonderful work that you are doing. No, absolutely. I'm really humbled um, that leaders in energy with your network, with your experience, have chosen to um, give me this award, but also highlight uh, the work that we are doing on the topic of biodiversity. So I think um, there's definitely a huge potential to do more things together. Um, and I just hope it inspires at least a few of your network members to continue thinking about this topic. Great. Thank you, Akansha and Janine also for that uh, wonderful introduction. Next up, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jennifer Sclaru, Department of Environmental Science and Policy at George Mason University. Thank you, Samuel. Hello, everyone. In this gathering, I know that there are many who have dedicated years of their lives to making our world more sustainable. But as a professor teaching on sustainability issues at George Mason University, I can say that it is not often that you meet someone in this category who is under the age of 20. I've known Jerry Acterman for more than 10 years, and he has always impressed me with his vision and his ability to communicate on issues important to him. So I wasn't surprised when he approached me when he was 12 years old with an ambitious revolutionary proposal to make Fairfax County a more sustainable, healthier environment for all students. He had learned about the environmental and health dangers associated with polystyrene trays, and he wanted his school to stop using them. He wanted all schools to stop using them. So we talked about a petition he could circulate at Fairfax County Schools, and Jerry did that, but he went much further. He created two petitions on social media that garnered over 500 signatures from across the state, the country, and the world. We talked about speeches he could make at Fairfax County Schools. And he did that, but he went much further. After an introduction to Miriam Gennari, whom some of you know, Jerry spoke on her sustainable scoop program. He created a PowerPoint presentation on polystyrene trays effects on the environment and health, and he presented it to the Fairfax County School Board. And the decision makers listened. The polystyrene trays were phased out of Fairfax County Public Schools based on Jerry's campaign. Now a freshman at Oberlin College, Jerry can inspire others in Gen Z and beyond. He has shown that young people can contribute to sustainable communities, not just in the future, but now. Jerry, I am proud to know you, and I hope that you continue to motivate everyone around you to help to build sustainability into our communities. Well, thank you so much, Jen, and Thank you to everyone at Leaders in Energy for organizing this incredible event and for spotlighting the extraordinary work of my fellow Four Gen Awardees. It is truly an honor to be with you all tonight. And when I think about what drove me to push for new trays, one word comes to mind, naivete. From an early age, adults have been telling me that the possibilities of life are endless and that I can affect change if I use my voice effectively. Without enough life experience to negate that belief, getting the polystyrene abolished seemed like the obvious course of action. I hope to carry this forward into everything I do. As an outsider who is apparently fresh off the train from Vermont, I can say that there is more work to be done in my community. I want to push for a countywide ban of polystyrene food service supplies, a precedent that has been set by Montgomery County in Maryland. I still dream big, even in semi-adulthood, but it is not radical to say that tension exists both within our psyches and within communities between reform and revolution. We see it in the various changes that well-meaning corporations, governments, and individuals make to to take on the climate crisis, ranging from incremental to drastic. We see it in debates over how to best move forward from systemic racism and ongoing police brutality. I see it in the mixed reactions many of my peers have to a future Biden presidency. My perspective is that we can and should do both. Reform and revolution are two equally useful tools in the struggle for a future that works. In my work, I made plans for both. If my appeals to reform through the school board went unanswered, I knew I could get other students, social media, and local media on my side. Success came 
not from choosing the objectively correct path to institutional change, but by simply trying things. So please, I challenge you, try things. If your middle school self knew everything about the world that you currently know, what would make you angry? Our futures will be shaped by our ability to remember and harness this anger. And what I hope I accomplished more so than alleviating one specific issue in one school system is provided proof that reform and revolution thrive under the collaboration between experienced and inexperienced alike. Tonight has highlighted the advantages that celebrating generational differences afford. Our diverse backgrounds are puzzle pieces for a holistic vision of the future. Thank you so much for this award. It is an extraordinary honor. Wow. Jerry, you make Gen Z proud. You make, uh, you make the Gen Generation X and Millennials proud. Great work, great work. And thank you, Dr. Skaru, for the introduction. Uh, next up to introduce the Baby Boomer awardee, I ask uh, William Brandon, VP of Leaders in Energy to join. Uh, yeah, I'm Bill Brandon, uh, VP for uh, Leaders in Energy. I met uh, Klaus several years ago in a workshop on uh, fuels, transportation fuels and uh, power uh, platforms. Uh, so I guess now I am turning this over to uh, Klaus Slackner and giving him virtually his award and let him explain uh, a little bit of how he got into this and, uh, and other remarks that he might like to make. Uh, so Klaus, I guess you're up. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great honor. I, I can't thank you not enough for giving me this award. I, I got into this nearly 30 years ago I was working actually on fusion related issues and I realized the world needs an awful lot of energy, uh, but we are creating an awful lot of waste too. And our current way of providing the energy for development in developing countries, for rich countries is simply not sustainable. Uh, it's important to work on this, this topic. I realized this in 1992, 1993 and one needs to find solutions and it actually find ultimately feels like a, a, a solvable problem and solar energy has made a big difference in the last few years because it really gives us the option of stepping away from fossil carbon meanwhile we have put so much carbon into the atmosphere that some of it we will have to put away so looking at the combinations of the two is what got me into into this and figuring out how to bring those two systems together. You can, you can see now that we are working with a startup company at Silicon Kingdom Holdings, uh, you can see their plan for building tree farms, mechanical tree farms of lots and lots of these in Arizona State is in the middle of this. And we will be the place of the first, first prototype and it's our ideas and our concepts which go into this, think of these discs, these flat round discs as the leaves on a tree and the tree, each one of those is about 10 meters tall and they collect CO2 for half an hour to an hour, then they drop into these buckets at the bottom, these drums at the bottom where we then ex remove the CO2, extract the CO2, process it on and we can do with it whatever we want to do. And the opportunities here are nearly limitless. We can sell CO2. And so I'm looking forward finding ways of getting the drawdown, getting which will require sequestration and storage and closing the carbon cycle in a way that we don't need fossil fuels anymore. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Klaus, and congratulations again, and William for the introduction. Thank you, Samuel. And, uh, you know, it's really an honor to be able to serve as the person who uh, helps leaders in energy deliver the award virtually to Peter Seidel. So, yeah, I think that uh, the things that characterize Peter that brought him to, to get this prestigious award is uh, an unquenchable curiosity, a relentless focus that he did develop after, after uh, the 1950s, a big picture, long-term focus but he's always been a very kind and humble fellow as well. And uh, he himself has provided tremendous amount of support for the right causes. 
that he's helped to identify here. And, uh, and I think it's safe to say that he may have saved the best for the last with the book on common sense. This is a good one. And uh, I know he would, he's very happy to have uh, gotten this award. He's aware of it. And I want to thank everybody at Leaders in Energy for, for making this happen, too. But um, thank you to all of our benefactors here. And um, you can see them on the screen and um, our media partners as well. So, so thank you. We really appreciate everything that you've done to make um, this event and a success and to support our mission and um, our work. Thank you for watching the Sustainable Scoop. Like and subscribe.